Um, today we are going to talk about, uh, we are continue, going to continue our discussion on sorting, we will begin with radix sort, then we are going to look at bucket sort. Um, in place sorting is something that we have seen before, which are the examples that we know of in place sorting? Heap sort, heap sort, heap sort, quick sort, insertion sort, selection sort, bubble sort, bubble sort we have not done. Okay. We are going to look at this, uh, we are going to see which is in place and which is not in place, right? Not all of these are in place, what you just said. Okay. We are seeing, going to see and then we are going to finally look at how fast we can sort. Can we do better than what we have been discussing so far? Okay. So, what is radix sort? So, in radix sort, we are going to look at the keys that we are going to sort. So, recall that in all the other sorting algorithms, we are only comparing the keys. We are not going to, we are not looking at what the actual structure of the keys is. It does not really matter if the keys are people provided you have a way of comparing two people, two persons, right. If you have a comparator function which given two person, two persons can say one is less than the other, then you can also sort people, yeah. But today or in radix sort, we are going to look at the key itself that we are trying to solve, that we are trying to sort, the collection of keys. So, we are going to assume that the keys are represented in some base m number system, right? And uh, m is called the radix. If m equals 2, then the keys are essentially in binary, right? It's base 2. Okay? So, uh, this could be an example 9 is 1001 in binary, right? In base 2. And we are going to use this representation of 9 to do the sorting for us. I can represent 9 in base, some other base also, base 3 let us say, right. Okay. So, then m would become 3 and I would get, you know, I, I can still use that to do, to, to, do, to do the sorting and we will see how, yeah. Okay. And in this, in radix sorting, the sorting is done by comparing bits in the same position. Right? So, instead of comparing numbers, instead of comparing 9 with 11, we are not going to compare 9 with 11, we are just going to compare the bits in 9 and 11 and which bits we are going to let us say, say look at the bit at position 3 and we are going to compare them. Okay? We will see all of that in a second. And this idea can be extended when the keys are let us say alphanumeric strings also, right? not just binary numbers not just numbers like this, but alphanumeric strings, so names of people or some such thing. You can also use the same idea to do sorting on that and we will see how. Okay, so, I am going to talk of two variants on radix sort, one is called the radix exchange sort. So, what we are going to do in radix exchange sort is we are going to examine the bits. So, I am going to assume now that the, num that the keys that we are trying to sort are some numbers represented in binary for us. Okay, and I am going to examine the bits from left to right. So, let us assume also that each of the numbers that are given to us have a fixed representation. Right? They are expressed in the same number of bits. Right? So, that is all that can always be done if the largest number in your collection is let us say uh, some n, then you need basically log n bits to represent that number, that largest number. And so, with log n bits, you can express all the other numbers in log n bits and that would be the number of bits that you would use to represent all the numbers in the collection you have. So, we are going to sort the array with respect to the leftmost bit first, right. So, suppose the numbers are sitting in this array, right, and the leftmost bit of this number. So, it really does not matter what these other bits are. I am just looking at the leftmost bit of each of these numbers. So, this is the first number, this row, the second number is in this row. So, there are five numbers, five rows. Yeah, I am going to look at the leftmost bit and I am going to sort the numbers according to this bit, which means that these are two zeros. So, they come first. So, number this number goes at this position, this number goes at this position and the ones come later. So, one, this will go here, this would go next and this would be the last number. So, this is what I would do. Sort according to the leftmost bit and since the bit can have only two different values, it is easy. The zeros come before the ones clear to everyone? And now, we partition this array, right. 
So, this is not yet sorted, this set of numbers is not sorted, but now if I, I will now divide it into two parts, this is the top subarray and the bottom subarray, right. And I am going to now sort this top subarray independently of the bottom subarray, right. So, what do I mean by top uh, sort the top subarray? I will just look at these numbers, forget this bit because this bit is the same for all of these numbers. So, it will not make any difference in the value of the number, I will just forget this bit. Similarly, when I am sorting this, I will forget this bit. What does it mean to forget this bit when I am sorting these numbers? So, I am saying I would take the number and remove and subtract some number from that. What is that number? If these were k bits number, I am subtracting 2 to the k from that number. So, if I subtract 2 to the k from each of the numbers and then sort them, then it is the same as sorting the original collection of numbers, it does not make a difference. Yeah? So, I can sort this bottom subarray independently of the top subarray and then I just put them together and I would get a sorted sequence. Right? So, it is a divide and conquer algorithm once again. Yeah? There is a divide step in which the zeros come before the ones, there is a conquer step right? and the combined step is trivial here. Uh, so, the conquer step this is the recursion, so we will recursively sort the top subarray ignoring the leftmost bit we will recursively sort the bottom subarray ignoring the leftmost bit once again. And how are we going to sort these? Using the same idea. We are going to partition this using the second leftmost bit or this leftmost bit and so on and on. So, how much time does it take to sort these n bit numbers then? So, I claim it takes order b n time if I have n numbers and b bits. Why is it taken? Why can you do it in so much time? Pun? Number of bits is log n. Is the number of bits log n? Log of the largest number. The largest number need not be n. It could be much larger than n, it could be much smaller than n. No, sir, but basically, sir, b is equal to log n because if you are assuming that it, uh, keys to be non negative integers, yeah. then the number of keys can be at most the largest. N is, yeah. only the number number. Of n is the number of numbers and, and number not the largest number. Okay, exactly, sir. So, so, number of keys n is at most the largest number. If you are, if you are true, true. Number of keys is at most the largest number. This statement is not true. You could have duplicated. So, and also, the largest number can be much, much larger than the number of keys, right? Yeah, but that's what 20,000. Okay, great. So, we will continue this discussion later. So, to, so I claim to sort n b bit numbers will require order b n time and why is this? Let us try and understand this. Right? Can I write a recurrence for this? Can someone write a recurrence for this? Okay, let us write a recurrence. Let me switch and write a recurrence. So, t of n comma b, why comma b? Number of bits is the time to sort n b bit numbers, yeah. Let us say this is t of n comma b, what is this equal to? Right, so we are going to partition these n numbers into two pieces. This was the top subarray. Let us say this has i numbers in it, and the remaining would be n minus i. Right? Yes. Now, how much time does it take to sort these i numbers? How much time does it take to sort these i numbers? Because we are going to do it recursively. So, it should be t of i, comma b minus 1 that is important the b minus 1. Why is it important? Because we are going to ignore the leftmost bit because the leftmost bit is going to be the same for all of these numbers. And the time required to sort the other n minus i numbers is n minus i comma b minus 1 plus something more. How much time? Because I 
had to spend some time to partition these numbers, right? The first, the, the numbers in which the leftmost bit was a 0 come before the numbers in which the number leftmost bit was a 1, right? So, they had to be rearranged, right? So, for each, yeah, and that can be done in order n time and this is the kind of a recurrence we would get, okay? Now, what is the solution for this recurrence? Anyone? What is the solution to this recurrence? B n. No, it is it's, uh, perfectly right, right? If you are saying B n, let us substitute. So, this is the third method we had talked about, right? Solving recurrences by, by guessing a solution and substituting that solution and actually verifying whether it is true or not. Let us see what it should be, right? Let us not worry too much about it. Let us see. Suppose, suppose t of n comma b was equal to b of n. Maybe I am wrong. Let us see whether I am right. Right. So, what is my right hand side then? So, the right hand side equals i because n is i times b minus 1 plus n minus i times b minus 1 plus n, which is this part is b minus 1 times i plus n minus i plus n, b minus 1 times n plus n, which is b n, which is also our left hand side. So, this is correct this is a solution to this recurrence, no harm. Okay. So, this is the time taken and we will see other ways of arguing the same thing. No, no, we do not have to do that. This would be the same for all choices of i, we do not have to do any averaging here. That was because we were doing a randomized quicksort, we were computing the expected time. I can vary, but what the whole point is that no matter what i what is, I is it will always be the same. <coughs> there depending upon what i were, the time would be different and so we were computing the average. If we were tried, if we tried to compute the average here, you would still get the same. The point is it is always the same no matter what i is. No, even then you do not have to go. If you do repeated substitution, once again you will see, of course, it will be more complicated, which is why I did not do that method here. Yeah? You can also solve it by repeated substitution and you will get the same answer. Right? It is just that you will have to keep track of what i's you used in the various points in the recursion and that will make it a bit more cumbersome, but you will get the same solution. Yeah, these are all b bit numbers, that is what we assume. The maximum number of bits is b, exactly. n has to be less than or equal to 2 to the power b. No, this is not true. I have not, never, nowhere said these are distinct numbers. I could have repetitions. Yeah? So, can't we just say that we have, uh, we have, we have b bits and for every bit, every bit we are doing n comparison? Yeah, so that would be one way of arguing it. I just wanted you to show you how to solve recurrence relations also. Right? There could be many ways of arguing the same thing. Yeah, that's one argument. Okay, everyone understands what the algorithm is. Yes. How do you combine in this divide and conquer step? We don't need to combine once we have sorted this top subarray and we have sorted this bottom subarray. We just put the all the numbers are b bit exactly. Here, that's why this is all you know uniform. That's why I said. You will take the largest number, see how many bits you need to represent that and you will use that many bits to represent every number. Otherwise, this does not work. How will we? You just pad it with zeros to the left. If 8 is 1, 0, 0, 0, 4 bits, then 2 would be 0, 0, 1, 0, 4 bits. Okay. Great. So, let us continue. 
uh, we'll not worry about negative numbers right now, right? So, if you had ne negative numbers and positive numbers, what would you do? So, first, first split the numbers into negatives and positives, sort them separately and put them together, right? Why make life more complicated than that, right? You can always sort them separately. Yeah. <coughs> no, that will not happen. Okay, we will see more examples and it will be clear. Great. So, in the previous slide, I said that you will have your zeros before your ones, right? That was the first step we did. Let me go back, right? We took these numbers and we changed this so that you had all the zeros appearing before the, the uh, numbers in which the leftmost bit was a zero appearing before the numbers in which the leftmost bit was a one, right? We did this kind of a partition, yeah? How do you do this quickly? Right. I, if you recall in my recurrence, I wrote order n for this and you did not right, raise a ruckus on that. Right. So, the point is we can use the partitioning algorithm that we employed in quick sort to do this. Right. What does that mean? We will scan from top to down finding the first key with a 1 in the leftmost bit and from bottom to up finding the first key with a 0 in the leftmost bit and swap that. Yeah, the same kind of a technique we use for quick sort and we will exchange these keys, right? And we will keep doing this until you know the scan index is exchanged so that we know that there are zeros above and ones below. And how much time did this take? At most the size of the array, okay? So, in this manner we can do the partition and then we can just call it recursively, right? And we will get a time of order n b. So, that is what we are doing here, we are scanning from the top to bottom. So, this is the first place we find a 1, this is the first place we find a 0, we swap them, 0 comes here, 1 comes here, right? And then the next index would be this one, right? And the next here would be this 0, so we will also scan them and we would get this and now we are done. So, what is happening? How is this different or related? to, uh, how is this different or related to uh, quick sort? So, I will come to that in a minute, but before that see what we are doing at each step. Suppose these are the numbers before we sort them, what does this mean? Um, <laughs> pardon? Right, these are the numbers, the first number in my array is this, let us say this is some, this is the value, the y the y coordinate is the value of the number, right? This is the number, the second number is this, this is the third, this is the fourth, this is the fifth, this is the sixth. So, what I am doing at the first step is that I am partitioning the numbers according to numbers which are more than 2 to the b minus 1 and numbers which are less than 2 to the b minus 1. The numbers which are less than 2 to the b, why 2 to the b minus 1? Because the first bit, the most significant bit we are saying should be a 1. They will come together and the ones for which it is a 0, they will come together. Yeah. So, I am partitioning the numbers according to 2 to the b minus 1. Those numbers whose value is more than 2 to the b minus 1, I am moving it to the right part of my array, right? So, this is what is happening. These are the numbers with values more than 2 to the b minus 1. So, they are in the right part of my array and the numbers which are less than 2 to the b minus 1, they are in the left part of my array, right? And I repeat this on this one, right? So, once again, I am going to divide this up. And now I am going to consider the numbers here which are larger than 2 to the b minus 1 plus 2 to the b minus 2 essentially, right? Yes. Within this part of course, more than 2 to the b minus 2 after I ignore the leftmost bit, but otherwise. So, we keep doing this and eventually we will get something like this, right? Which corresponds to a sorted sequence. So, this is pictorially what is happening, right? But you understand the algorithm. Okay, now, how does this compare to quick sort? Both the algorithms partition the array, both recursively sort the subarrays. So, the structure is very similar. The difference is in the way we partition, right? In the case of radix exchange sort, we are partitioning with respect to not a pivot element, but with respect to a fixed quantity. We are saying anything more than 2 to the b minus 1 goes there, 
in the bottom half of the array, anything less than 2 to the b minus 1 goes in the uh, upper part of the array, right. So, it is the method of partitioning which makes the difference. In the radix exchange, divide the array based on whether the number is larger than 2 to the b minus 1 or less than, while in quicksort we are partitioning based on a pivot element. The difference is also in the time complexity. For radix exchange, we argued just now that the time complexity is order b n and for quicksort, we argued that the average case is n log n, right. So, sometimes this might be a better scheme, sometimes this might be a better scheme depending upon what the value of b is for you. Yeah. Great. So, that was a radic exchange sort where we were exchanging the elements in the array. So, I am going to look at another version of radic sort. The principle is the same, right, but this is also another way of implementing radic sort. So, you said that uh, quick sort can be better. Quick sort can be better, yeah, when b is larger than log n. B can be larger than log n, right? You can have one number, you can have numbers which are 2, 3, 7, 11 and one number which is 1 million and 3. Now, you need a huge number of bits because there is one very large number, right? So, that b would be much larger than log n then because the number of numbers is very small, but the largest number is very large. So, that the number of bits you require to do your sorting is large, yeah? Great. So, we will continue. Start, uh, this is another version as I said of radix sort, straight radix sort. So, we are going to examine once again the bits from left, from right to left now, not from left to right, but from right to left. And we are looking going to, so, uh, so the 0 is the k equals 0 corresponds to the rightmost bit now, right, the least significant bit, also called the least significant bit. Right. So, k equals 0 is the least significant bit and b minus 1 is the most significant bit and we are going to sort the array based on this bit, the kth bit in a stable way. So, sort the array in a stable way looking at only bit, only at the kth bit, okay. Let us see what this means. Do you understand what stable way means? No, great. We will come to that in the next slide, yeah. But let me show you what this is. This is the collection of numbers you have, what the algorithm is. You are first going to look at the rightmost bit, right? And you are going to sort these numbers based on the rightmost bit. So, as you can see, after you sorted them, first in the first, you first have the numbers which have the rightmost bit as 0, and then you have the numbers which have the rightmost bit as a 1. Then you sort these numbers based on the on the second leftmost bit on the second rightmost bit, right. So, this corresponds to k equals 1. So, you are sorting them based on this and then finally, you are sorting these numbers based on this and what will have what will happen at the end is that you will have a sorted sequence, yeah. So, as you can see this is originally non sorted and what you have here is a sorted sequence. So, why is this magic happening? So, you understand the algorithm take the rightmost bit, sort the numbers based on that, which means that just restrict that, restrict your attention to the rightmost bit. Anything that is a 0 comes before everything that is a 1, good. Now, you have done some rearranging of the numbers. Now, look at the second rightmost bit. They do the sorting with respect to the second rightmost bit. Everything which is a 0 comes before everything which is a 1 and so on and on. So, how much time does this take? B n once again, right? Because for each bit you are spending time proportional to n. Partitioning will not be used, right? So we'll see how to do it. We'll see. Okay, so so it's not completely clear how why B n, but we'll come to to that argument also in a minute. So first we need to understand what is sorting in a stable way. What does this mean? A stable sort is one in which if two numbers are the same, then after sorting, so if two keys are the same, equal keys, then after sorting their relative order remains unchanged, right. Suppose I have two numbers, so I, I have a collection of numbers, I have 1, 3, 11, 3, 5. Right, these are my numbers, right. I have two threes in there, equal keys. Now, 
if after sorting of course after sorting this array would become 1 3 3 5 11 right but the two threes that i have now suppose with those two threes i had one one was colored red and the other was colored blue right the first was colored red and the second was colored blue then after sorting the red should appear before the blue although they are still threes they should appear in the same relative order as was the case before before we did the um, sorting right so that's called a stable sort and we'll see why it is relevant here and why it is important here okay so let's look at this now okay so this is what we were sorting and let's say we are sorting with respect to the rightmost bit yeah so i have four keys with zero right they will all come before the four keys which are at a one which have the rightmost bit at a one but i would like that this appears before this so the first number should better be 0 1 0 the next should be all the three zeros the next should be 1 0 0 the next should be 1 1 0 which is the case here i am not permitted to rearrange them you know if I, when i am saying i just sort with respect to the last bit you could also create this array of post sorted in which this was the first number but that would be wrong that would not be a stable sorting and similarly for the ones the first should be a 101 the next should be 001 the next should be 111 and the next should be 011 this is crucial for the correctness of the sorting algorithm if you don't do it this way this this will not give you a sorted sequence at the end okay so everyone understands what stable sorting means okay now let's understand the correctness of the algorithm so we are now going to show that any two keys are in the correct relative order at the end that means that if i take two keys one is smaller than the other yeah okay then in the end the key which is smaller appears before the key which is larger okay it's very simple proof so suppose these are the two keys that were given to me let me look at the leftmost position at which they differ leftmost right so this they don't differ at this place they don't differ at this place either but they differ at this place let me call this position k okay now when i'm sorting these when i'm sorting this bunch of numbers what's going to happen i would have when i sorted so when i'm sorting remember i'm sorting by considering first the rightmost then the second rightmost then the third rightmost and so on so when i considered okay let's understand this So the claim is that at step k, the two keys are put in the correct relative order. So at the first step, they are put in some, they are maybe rearranged, I do not care, right? They are put in some order. At the second step also, they are put in some order, I do not know. But at the kth step, right, this key would be put before this key because this is a 0 and this is a 1, okay? So at the kth step, the two keys are put in the correct relative order but the, all's not done now we want to argue that at successive at the later steps at the k plus 1th step and the k plus 2th step and so on the relative order is not interchanged yahan pe to aapne isko is key ke pehle dal diya array mein apne but aisa nahi hona chahiye ki baad mein step ke baad mein aap wapas garbad kar dein par aisa hoga kya because of stability so now when i'm looking at the k plus 1th step at the k plus 1th step these are the same right these are the same so because it's a stable sort this key which is appearing before this would continue to appear before this yeah and similarly at this next step and so on and on so beyond the kth step the relative order would not change anymore at the kth step you would get the right order between these two keys the smaller key will appear before the larger key and at subsequent steps this relative order would be preserved the smaller key would continue to appear before the larger key yes okay okay so let's take an example 
this is my the two keys once again that I am considering. So, initially they could be in some arbitrary order. Uh, I have in fact that the larger key is appearing before the smaller key. This is the array in which the numbers are, right? Yahan pe aur bahut sare numbers hain idhar udhar, ye blue band signifies ki bahut sare aur number hain beech mein. Ye bada wala number hamara chota wale number ke pehle aa raha hai, right? This is location 0 of the array and so on and on. So, we would like that the array keys be in increasing order, but right now the bigger number is appearing before the smaller number. When I am looking at the kth step, at this step when I am sorting with respect to this bit, the kth bit, I would have put 0 1 0 1 1 before 0 1 1 0 1 clearly, because at the kth position this is a 0 and this is a 1. Now, when I am looking at the next more significant bit, yeah, I would continue this relative order, because the next more significant, at the next more significant bit they are the same. If they are the same, then stable sorting ensures that I have to maintain the relative order that was there till that point, in which this was appearing before this. So, this will continue to appear before this, in this step and in subsequent steps also. So, because the sort is stable, the order of the two keys will not be changed when bits more than k are greater than or bits at position larger than k are, con are compared. Okay. You can also see now why I had to start from the right end if I start from the left end, then this technique is not going to work. Okay. Think of, take this as an exercise, think of an example, where if I were to start from the left end, this would not give me a sorted sequence at the end. Right? Now, there is nothing sacrosanct about decimal uh, binary numbers, I can also apply the same technique to decimal numbers. Right? So, what do I do? First, I sort with respect to the rightmost digit, yeah, which means that the 1s would come before the 2s would come before the 3s and so on and on. Again, the sorting is stable. Right? So, after the first step, as you can see, the first number would be, so there is a 1, 1, there are 2, 2s here and so on and on. So, there is the unique one is 0, 3, 1. So, 0, 3, 1 becomes the first number. Right? And then there are these 2, 2s, 0, 3, 2 and 2, 5, 2 which should be the second number 0, 3, 2 because it is stable. So, 0, 3, 2 is the next, 2, 5, 2 is the third and so on and on. So, I sort with respect to this. Next, I sort with respect to this. So, there is a 1 here, 0, 1, 5, there is another 1. So, I will first put this and then I will put this Yeah, and so on. And uh, as you can see at the end, I got a sorted sequence. Yeah. So, now we need to figure out the time complexity, how much time are we taking. So, how many passes, such passes are we making? We are making as many passes as the number of digits or the number of bits or whatever it is. Yeah. But we need to now see what we are going to do in one pass. How are we getting the 1s before the 2s, before the 3s and so on in a stable manner? <coughs> how much time does that take? what kind of a scheme should we employ for that? Exactly. So, for exchange radix sort, we basically wanted to partition the array into two parts only, right. But here, because these are digits, not just 0, 1, it is not a two-way partition anymore, right. Sir, we cannot use exchange sort for directly… For decimal numbers, we will have to represent it in a binary form to be able to do this. What is like an insertion? I do not quite follow what you are saying. We will discuss this later. Huh? Uh, okay. So, uh, let us figure out what the time complexity is. For k equals 0 to b minus 1, we are sorting the array in a stable way looking only at the kth bit. So, suppose this could be performed in order n time, then the total time complexity would be order b n. Yeah, that is completely clear, provided we can do this sorting in order n time. Which sorting are we talking about? We are looking at a particular digit, yeah, one pass. We are looking at a particular digit or a bit and we want to ensure 
that all the numbers if I am looking at it uh, decimal numbers all the numbers uh, are sorted based on that digit right the ones before the twos before the threes and that the sorting is stable yeah. So, we want to be able to do this in order n time and the method of choice is what is called the bucket sort algorithm right? that becomes, becomes, brings us to the second sorting scheme that we talked about. Okay. So, what is bucket sort? Lots of buckets. Okay. So, we have n numbers, each number is in a certain range let us say 1 through m. So, bucket sort is a stable sorting algorithm and it will take time order n plus m. Right? You understand what we are talking of? So, this is very useful when you have a large number of numbers with lots of duplicates perhaps and the numbers are coming from a small range. Right? Then you do not need something like n log n time or some such thing. You can then do it in time order n plus the range of the numbers essentially. Okay? And let us see how this works. So, so, suppose this is my collection of numbers 2, 1, 3, 1, 2. So, m is 3 right? because you can see the numbers are in the range 1, 2, 3. So, m is 3. There are 2 2s and 2 1s. So, first what we are going to do is we are going to create m buckets right? and you can understand what you will do in each bucket. right? Just take a number and throw it in the appropriate bucket. So, we have these 3 buckets, one corresponding to each possible value in this range and each element of the array is put in the in one of the m buckets. So, uh, these are my buckets take the first number it goes into bucket 2. So, I put it here sorry uh, then I take the next number it goes into bucket 1. So, I put it here the third number goes into bucket 3 I put it here the fourth number goes into bucket 1. So, I append it at the end of this list end is important to maintain stability right and then I take this 2 and append it at the end and now I will just read the numbers. I will take the numbers in the first bucket, append basically append all of these lists. Yeah, so 1, 1, 2, 2, 3 and so on. So, we will put the elements from the buckets into an array and just read it off in this manner. So, this gives us a stable sorting. You understand why it is stable? Right, because if two keys are the same, then they would be in the same bucket, but we would also have put them in the right order. that is why we are appending. Right? If you were attaching at the front, then we would have to read it the other way around, which is the same as that. Okay? Great. So, with that, you should be able to argue that uh, um, our straight radix sort takes order b n time now. Right? We said for each pass we want to do it in order n time and you can do it in order n time using such a scheme using bucket sort. So, you do that in order n time and there are b passes and all. So, it becomes order b n. Yes? You are going to get one question from this in the exam. Yeah? Okay. In place sorting. Yes? You want to know what the question is? <laughs> okay, so, a sorting algorithm is said to be in place if it uses no auxiliary data structures. It could use a constant amount of additional space however. And it updates the input sequence only by means of the operations replace element and swap. Basically, it just uh, you know, so you have a bunch of numbers, it replaces one of them by some other or it just swaps two numbers. That is when we call the algorithm to be in place. So, let us see which algorithms we have seen can be made to work in in place. So, bubble sort actually you have not seen right or you know what bubble sort is. Huh? You do not know what bubble sort is? Okay, I will not go into bubble sort then. 
let us see. Uh, Okay, who can tell me heap sort? Is heap sort in place? So, we can have one array and you basically implement our heap in that array and we are just changing the elements in that array. Merge sort, is merge sort in place? Why not? To merge two lists, you need additional space, right? You cannot merge in the same list. So, merge sort is not in place. Quick sort? quick sort is in place because we partitioned in the same array and then we just did recursively left and right yeah okay for merge sort to do the merge to merge two lists you need additional space because what were we doing in merge we were taking the first element of the two lists comparing them and putting it out into some other space you can't just copy it back there it would not work Yeah, order one space is okay, it is in place, yeah, but not size, not space proportional to the number of elements, it should be independent of the number of elements, okay. So, you can look at the other algorithms and think of whether they are going to be in place or not. Radix sort, is radix sort in place? But buckets, but the number of buckets is independent of the number of numbers. The nodes that we are creating, yes, that is additional space, right. So, can you modify the scheme to make it in place? So, you keep count the frequency. Every bucket just count the number of those elements that are in the array. Yeah, you will have to think about it. So, think about this. Can you make it in place? Can you make radix sort in place? It is a good thing to think about. Okay, so let me get to the last topic that we are going to cover as far as sorting is concerned and that is a lower bound for comparison based sorting, right. So, what does comparison based sorting mean? It basically means that we are only looking at sorting algorithms in which all you are permitted to do is to compare two numbers, right. So, suppose you have a bunch of elements, I am not even saying numbers now and you want to sort those elements, right. I give you those elements. I have a comparison function which you have to use to do the sorting, right. So, like your comparator. Right. So, you give me the two numbers, I will tell you which of them is smaller than the other because maybe these are not numbers but some objects and I am the only one who knows how to compare these <coughs> objects, yeah. So, that is a comparison operation, you give me these two numbers, I decide whether one is less than the other or not, whether the first is less than the second or the second is less than the first I, and I give you the answer, yeah. Now, the question is how many times will you have to ask me? for a comparison, you understand? You, are, you wanted to sort these n numbers, how many times will you have to ask me? Maybe I charge you 1 rupee for every time you make, you, you, uh, you give me a certain comparison to do, right? The comparison is a let us say an expensive operation. Every time you say compare these two numbers for me, I am going to charge you 1 rupee. So, how much money are you going to spend? n log n you have seen you have seen algorithms which would take no more than n log n time what we are going to argue now is that there can be no algorithm which takes less than n log n time n log n comparisons no one can come up with an algorithm right so that that algorithm will always take less than n log n will will uh, you know will take less than n log n comparisons for all inputs, for certain inputs it could take less than n log n comparisons, but for all inputs it would take less than n log n comparisons, that is not possible at all, okay. So, we are going to understand this in the following way. Let us look at a particular algorithm, yeah. So, you have a certain algorithm and uh, let us say your objects are sitting in some array and your algorithm works on that array. So, at the first step it is going to ask me 
to compare two elements of that array. Yeah, let us say those elements are at positions S1 and S2. Okay. So, my very top node here is this node whether S1 is greater than S2 or not. Right? It is going to ask me this and I am free to say whether one is less or whether one is more based on what my comparator function says. Right? So, these are so to say the, uh, the questions that the algorithm is asking me. First it asks whether S, it asks me to compare S1 and S2. If I said a yes, then it would have asked me a, it would have asked me for a comparison of S1 and S3. Let us say I have such a thing. If I had said no, maybe it asked me for a comparison of something else. This need not be S1, S3, it could be something else. Right? Depends upon what the algorithm is. But at each point, it is coming back to me with certain comparisons, with certain numbers to compare. The first time it says something, then depending upon whether I say yes or no, it, the, the next step, the next comparison it asks me something else. Now, depending upon whether I said yes or no, the next comparison it could ask me would be something else and so on and on. So, the execution of the algorithm is really a path down this tree. Yes? Right? Great. Now, at some point, the algorithm is going to stop. Right? When it, it does not ask for any more comparisons, it says, well, I am done. This is your sorted sequence. Right? So, it, which means that this path ends in this external node here, this leaf node here, which corresponds to a particular permutation of those numbers. Right? This, this sequence of moves would have been made if, you know, if I had a certain uh, ordering on the numbers for a certain permutation of the numbers. Uh, okay, let us uh, understand this. We can compare anything, yeah. Hmm. Anything. So, that depends on execution. So, if, so that, uh, that those numbers which we are comparing, that is randomized over the entire set. The Any two numbers we pick up, randomized. No, no, no. So, there is nothing. So, do not look at it that way, right. So, we are saying your algorithm, hum, you have a certain algorithm, right, uh, which has the numbers written in an array, let us say 1 through n. At the very first step, it is going to come and make a certain comparison. Let us assume it is a deterministic algorithm, no randomization for now. Right? The same argument applies for randomization also, but for now let us assume it is deterministic. It will say, okay, compare, let us say, first, first time it comes to me, it will say, look at the number in location 3, look at the number in 7 and tell me which is smaller, whether 3 is less than the number in location 3 is less than the number in location 7 or whether the number in location 7 is less than the number location in number 3. Right? So, I put a node here saying, uh, let us say this array was S. So, whether S3 is less than S7 is the first comparison it asked me for. If I had said a yes, I do not know. If I said a yes, it would go and ask me some other to compare some other two numbers. It is your algorithm. I do not know what it is going to ask me. But whatever it is going to ask me, I am going to put down here. Suppose it came and said S2 versus S5 whether S2 is less than S5. And if I had said a no, maybe it came back and asked me something else. It came and asked me S6 less than S13, maybe, right? It is your algorithm, okay? So, depending upon what option do I have, I have an option of basically saying my yes and no. That is all I say. Yeah, I say a yes and then I say, you know, I can say a yes, a no and so on and on, depending upon what I rate as the relative order of these elements in these array. Right? Think of these objects as some complicated objects. You do not know what their relative order is. So, that is why you are asking me about them. 
right? And I have some way of figuring out what the relative order is. Maybe today I feel like that the relative order should be, you know, based on GPA. Then tomorrow I feel like relative order should be based on height or whatever it is, right? I can decide, right? And for that, I would make a certain choices of yes and no, which would eventually end up in a, in a leaf, in an external node of this, right? And so when you reach this say, you say, well, I have sorted it. You stop because this is all the comparisons you did. The question is, how many comparisons did you have to do? The number of comparisons is basically the length of the path that you took, the height of this tree. Yes? So how many comparisons would you have to do? How high does this tree have to be? N log n. Why n log n? Yes. So that is right, there have to be n factorial leaves in this tree. Now this is not a straightforward thing to understand, right, dekhe, depending upon what these objects are, I should be able to get all kinds of permutations. Every permutation is a possible solution at the end, every permutation of these n numbers. What is sorting? A sorting, you are given the elements like this. And eventually, what do you generate? You generate a permutation of these elements? Yes or no? Aap last mein kehte hai, haan, ye array meri sort ho gai, ye meri sorted array hai. What is this? This is just a permutation of this set of elements? Ye jo pehle yahan par hai, wo kahin aur aagaya, ye jo hai yahan aagaya and so on and on. This is just a permutation of this? Now, all possible permutations should be poss should, should, should exist as leaves. That depends upon what that depends upon what the relative order is, what I have picked as the relative order, right. So given a certain permutation, if that is what I picked as the relative order, then your algorithm should end up in that. If I took some other permutation and picked that as the relative order, then your algorithm should end up in that and so on and on. So every leaf of this tree corresponds to a permutation. Yeah? And furthermore, every permutation should be representable as a leaf. So which means that this tree has n factorial leaves. Yeah? It is not a complete binary tree I, or it may be, it's, it is, I do not care. I know it is a binary tree, right? It is a binary tree with n factorial leaves. So what is its height going to be? At least log of n factorial, right. So height therefore is at least log of n factorial, at least, jada bhi ho sakti hai, but kam se kam itni to hogi hogi, yeah. So our order, the comparator, does it satisfy the, matlab uh, symmetric or the transitive Yes, properties? yes, it, it satisfies all of that. Even then, it can, you know, I take a particular permutation of these elements and I say, I am going to answer with respect to this permutation. All queries that are asked for me, I will answer with respect to this permutation that I have in my head. So then, is it possible that suppose I have S1, there are three, suppose we take S1, S2 and S3. Yeah. And at some point in the tree, we have some, com uh, some decision of related to S1, S2 and S2, S3. Yeah. And then other point in the, uh, the tree, yeah. other point in the tree, there is a decision based on S1 and S3. Yeah. Now that cannot take both the paths, yes and no, because. Yeah, I understand that, but that's not the point. The point, all, all we are trying to say here. All we are trying to say here is that. So it's not necessary every uh, node. Has that I could have a certain permutation in my head. I could have a certain permutation in my head and I could use that to answer all your questions and it would be consistent. Yeah. So there have to be n factorial leaves and if in a binary tree there have there are n factorial leaves, basically if there are some n leaves in a binary tree, then it has to have a height of at least log n. Right? So which means that the tree has to height have a height of at least log of n factorial. So height of the tree is at least log of n factorial. This is roughly n log n, right? Which means that there is a certain permutation 
So what is the height? The height is the distance of the longest of the furthest leaf from the root. So if this is the furthest leaf from the root, then if this were the permutation, then your algorithm is going to take a time of at least n log n or number of comparisons at least n log n it is going to take. Okay. So this is the argument, um, you can go over these slides once again and understand it more carefully. So this is the argument for why any comparison based sorting algorithm has to have at least n log n time. So recall this is only, you are only permitted to compare two keys. Radix sort is not an example of a comparison based sorting algorithm, right? Because you are not comparing keys, you are going into the keys looking at the bits or the digits. And so that is why Radix sort does not have the complexity n log n. It could be less than n log n if b, the number of bits or digits, is less than log n. Yeah? So Radix sort is the only such. All other algorithms have to have, because they are all comparison based sorting algorithms, they have to have a complexity of at least n log n. And there are many which achieve that bound. Yeah? So with that, I am going to end today's class. Um, so we looked at radix sort, we looked at bucket sort, we understood what <coughs> stable sorting is and uh, finally we saw this lower bound on comparison based sorting.